Navient has consistently ranked as one of the most disliked student loan servicers among borrowers. There are also several Navient lawsuits that contend the servicers' missteps have indeed entered them into criminal territory. (laughs) So with so many customer service and repayment guidance complaints, student loan borrowers need to be aware of options for Navient student loan forgiveness. In this video, we're going to cover how to get Navient student loan forgiveness. But before we get started, please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already done so. It really helps us reach other borrowers who may benefit from this information. So I really would appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe. Let's go ahead and jump in then to chat about the key points. Um, So a quick update on some of the major happenings with Navient as of mid-February 2022. Uh, so one update is that there have been several Navient lawsuits that that do contend the servicer has really been misguiding folks. Uh, a major settlement was reached in January 2022 that includes $1.7 billion in private student loan cancellation and $95 million in restitution payments to certain federal student loan borrowers. We have a whole dedicated podcast episode to this, which we've linked in this video. In September of 2021, Navient announced its desire to departure from the student loan servicing business altogether, and their plans uh, were to transfer 6 million federal borrower accounts to a company called Maximus Education. However, Maximus created a subsidiary called Aid Vantage, which now will be the official student loan servicer for those who were previously stuck with Navient. We also have a dedicated video and podcast episode to this topic, which we've linked in the video below. So let's now take a look at Navient loan forgiveness options available today. Uh, So first thing we need to know is what kind of Navient student loans do we have? If you have federal student loans, they're probably already over at Advantage uh, at the time of this video that we've been seeing a lot of folks getting moved over there. But if they're federal, these loans might be eligible for federal forgiveness programs like public service loan forgiveness. But private loans, uh, privately held or institutionally held loans, they will not be. Private student loans may be eligible for for forgiveness through state or other profession-specific student loan programs, but not federal programs. So if you have federal student loans with Navient, there are uh, several forgiveness options that could be available to you. So let's go down the line. One would be income-driven repayment forgiveness or IDR forgiveness. There are four different income-driven plans. (laughs) So that's a lot. Let's talk about the differences between them. One is called pay as you earn, which is based on 10% of your discretionary income. It has a 20 year timeline to forgiveness. That's the shortest. Uh, Next is revised pay as you earn, which is also 10% of discretionary income, but it's 25 years to forgiveness if we have graduate school loans, 20 years to loan forgiveness if we uh, just went to undergrad. Now, there's also income-based repayment, or IBR, and this is based on 15% of discretionary income with a 25-year timeline to forgiveness. And then there's income contingent repayment that's based on 25 years uh, going to loan forgiveness as well. And it's based on 20% of discretionary income. So those are the four different income driven plans that all have that maximum repayment period where after making those 20 or 25 years of payments, whatever balance is left over on the loans is then forgiven. Uh, is then forgiven. By taking advantage of these income-driven plans, you may might be able to reduce what your student loan payment is since it's based on your income instead of a regular payoff approach. And depending on the plan you choose, you'll be eligible for the loan forgiveness in the 20 or 25 years, but you'll want to stay vigilant to make sure that your federal student loan payments are being handled correctly. And you'll need to recertify your income and family size each year. And You will have an anniversary to do that. You'll know each time a year when you need to do it. Make sure you recertify income on time, make your payments, and, you know, keep keep receipts of those payments. So download your statements frequently. Make sure you know where you're at on your payment count towards the 20 or 25 years. Now, next on the list for forgiveness options is public service loan forgiveness, or PSLF for short. This is for those who work in a qualifying employer 
in the public sector, such as a government or a nonprofit organization. Uh, the public service loan forgiveness is is probably going to be your best bet if if that's the case. If you are working in that environment, definitely consider looking at public service loan forgiveness. Because with PSLF, you can earn tax-free loan forgiveness in as little as 10 years, which is more technically 120 qualifying monthly payments. And at the time of this video, until uh, October 31st, 2022, there is a PSLF waiver opp opportunity. And you can learn a little bit more about the PSLF waiver by checking out the videos we've linked above as well. That's a big deal. So if you haven't heard about this PSLF waiver, you've been working for an eligible employer, definitely check out this PSLF waiver video. Now, before we get into number three, <laughs> I want to remind you, please like this video if it's helping you or if you're gaining something from this. Um, subscribe to our channel. It really does help us uh, reach more viewers like yourself just seeking this information. The student loan world is complicated, so we want to spread that good info as, as much as we can. Um, so with that, let's get into number three. So the third uh, avenue of forgiveness could be teacher loan forgiveness. So teacher loans uh, or teacher loan forgiveness uh, allows teachers to be eligible for up to 17,500 of Navient student loan forgiveness through that specific program. But to qualify, you'll need to be considered a highly qualified teacher by the Federal Student Aid Office in the Department of Education and you'll need to teach five consecutive academic years in a low-income elementary school, secondary school, or an educational uh, service agency. So one of those uh, entities. Now, it's important to point out that PSLF and teacher loan forgiveness do not mix well. You cannot go towards both at the same time. So you do have to decide if, if your balance is greater than that 17,500, PSLF might be a better route to consider. Um, if not, if you have a smaller balance uh, that, that could be wiped out with the teacher loan forgiveness, then by all means go that direction, but definitely uh, take careful consideration between which option you're going towards. PSLF could be a bigger bang for your buck opportunity because it's 100% of loan forgiveness after 120 payments versus just the, um, uh, the 17,500 with teacher loan forgiveness. Uh, you'd only get 5,000 of teacher loan forgiveness if you're not teaching math, science, or special education. So the 17,500 only comes with those specific professions too. Um, so that's, that's a little bit about teacher loan forgiveness. Let's talk about the option number four for Navient loan forgiveness, and that's a loan discharge. So this isn't technically forgiveness, but it should be noted that there are several ways that federal student loan borrowers can become eligible to get their student loans discharged. One example is the total and permanent disability discharge or TPD for short. Uh, to qualify for TPD discharge, you'll need to provide medical documentation of your disability, um, and eligible loans for the TPD discharge include direct loans, FFEL loans, and Perkins loans. We also have a video on TPD, so make sure to check that out if you're interested or if it resonates with your situation. So lastly, let's talk about getting rid of, of Navient student loans by refinancing. That's another option we have. It's not forgiveness, but you can expedite getting rid of your Navient student loans by refinancing. Here's things to consider when you're thinking about going this route. One is, will you be eligible for federal forgiveness? Um, are you on track for, for the income-driven forgiveness, or are, could you be eligible for public service loan forgiveness? If not, then refinancing could be a good option. Um, number two, or the second thing you need to consider here is, what's your financial situation? You really want to be uh, you know, financially stable, meaning we have you know, emergency savings in the bank, we don't have any other higher interest debt in the mix. Um, cash flow is, is strong or our, our um, income is uh, very reliable, that's when it's a, a good idea to look at uh, refinancing because private companies aren't as flexible with repayment options or with forbearance opportunity. So we do want to be in a healthy financial situation before deciding to refinance. 
And uh, that also ties into to the third tip here is just, have you achieved career stability? So if you're not sure you're going to stay at your job, if there's an opportunity that you might go into public service, refinancing might not be a good idea because when we go to refinance, um, you know, the benefit is reducing our interest rate. But if we go to refinance, we are committing to paying the loans off. We can't go back. We can't take them back to the Fed system. So that's a, that's a few things to consider. Refinancing could be a good option to help us pay down the loans faster by reducing our interest rate. But you'd want to make sure you consider those those three things. So what video is next on the list here? <laughs> so check out our most recent podcast episodes on Navient. Check out our next videos coming up. Uh, you'll enjoy our team's deep dive into these, these complicated topics and, and our discussions with them. Um, and that's all, that's all for this video. Thank you for hanging out with me. If you want to stay up to date with our student loan insights and what's going on in the student loan world, not only subscribe to this channel, but our team sends out a weekly newsletter and it's completely free. Uh, no spam, <laughs> literally no spam, just the good stuff, really short and sweet. Uh, link will be pinned below if you're interested, but until next time, thanks for hanging out with me.